Hello and welcome back to another session of, well, I think it's uh, Google RS because um, there has been a long-standing issue in one library that Google RS depends on, namely uh, this one, Yap OAuth 2. That's, the, well, the, the Yap I have to cut at some point when I actually have it on working on stable and maybe re-release it or something. But what I want to do is to use syntax in order to get my, my serialization going. Oh, wait a moment. I just realized that my setup is not yet complete because my secondary iPad based screen is not yet connected. And there it is. Awesome. And now I set it up. And yeah, usually I do this beforehand, obviously, but I kind of forgot. So here we are. And this issue was blocked for quite a while uh, because Syntax would abort and wouldn't compile tests for me or wouldn't put the tests in the, in the library. But this has been fixed by now. Both of the issues have been fixed, which is totally awesome. And uh, yeah, upgrade. I updated everything I could update about the Rust toolchain, so Nightly is up to date. But I shouldn't need Nightly, right? So actually, let's do Yup OAuth two here. Yup OAuth, and I'm already on the Syntax branch. Let's see, which is part of the next one, right? So I next is basically trying to do a few things here and. And uh, now it's about trying to get Syntax to work, which shouldn't be that difficult, but I ran into all kinds of issues last time. Uh, the, pro the, the main problem that seems to remain is my inability to get Yap Hypermock to work in tests because the macros are for some reason not defined anymore. And this is something I should try to figure out now. So yeah, let's see where we are. Jesus. Oh, that's Sir. That's actually, I'm, I'm in third YAML here. So now I'm in the right one. So I already changed things around here um, and tried a few things yesterday, but without success, but at some point it must work, right? So that's actually my only problem. Syntax seems to be generating good code now. So that's the file that is generated by Syntax. It basically contains uh, this part here, it should, pub use, ah, here it is, and then inserts everything it, it wants um, to the file in order to implement serialization and deserialization for the various types. And then you actually see how much code is generated, you know, because that that is now everything together, like all the modules put in there. This is what gets compiled in the end. Um, yeah, so pretty neat. Actually, I like it because that's a pure view on your library. And of course, you can also write your library in just one big file if you if you please to do so. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is also something I I wanted to look at. Because apparently yesterday I removed this stuff here uh, without any change. What did I try here? So if it's nightly, then we want we want to use third macros as plugin. This is what that says. Uh, yeah. So I tried to set it up so that I basically can use both versions. And maybe there's also something I, I just shouldn't do, even though if it works, you know, I could I could obviously do it. So default is with syntax, nightly is third macros. Yeah. I still have trouble figuring out the fe the feature syntax here. Um and getting this to work right. I mean this works, but I can't remember how, how this works. It kind of makes not so much sense to me yet. Maybe one day. I think Tommel is the basis for my confusion, really, because it's so kind of, you know, the, my mental model for Tommel is just, you know, I expect YAML all the time, or JSON, which follows the, the real world 
structure and dependency, but this is not the case uh, for Tommo. Yeah, I think it's not even part of the pro the problem. Isn't really the format here. It's just I don't know. Just difficult for me. Um, yeah, so right now, if you if you're unstable, basically what you should get. I know this doesn't make a difference here. Yeah, there's just a new line missing. What you should get is exactly that. So wait, a feature is nightly. Then we include this. Really? Ah, no, wait. Ah, we include this directly. And the feature is with syntax. Then we include the compiled library. Basically this thing here. Okay. Okay. If this is that. <clears throat> Interesting. So it doesn't mean I get this documentation here as well. No, not here. Okay, so this is include this file is then included into this one, which finally gets compiled. Okay. Anyway, we are unstable here. So I would be thinking that we can uh, just run this and get somewhere. I think I've, I've updated it yesterday as well and we are kind of stable. And you see that <sighs> the only problem I have is that the macros don't get in there for some reason. And I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't know why these macros are not arriving where they should arrive. And uh, if you look at this, you know, yep, hypermock, this file is supposed to be included in, in this library file. I mean, there's not much to it really. Where's the third binding? Ah, it, it comes in here. Okay, that's why we don't see it, but it doesn't matter. Here I would expect to use macros and even, you know, this is kind of gated so that we only use this crate. Yeah, we actually don't need to rename it, huh? So that we only use this crate uh, if we need to, but even if I take this out, you know, nothing, nothing really happens. This macro use just doesn't work for me. Boom. And I was thinking, man, maybe it's I'm not importing these uh, or not exporting these. Maybe it just doesn't work. I don't know. So I guess it's time to break it down to get into some some simpler environment because here so many tools are at work that maybe there's some bug that makes this fail. Uh, you know, I don't know where this bug could be, but maybe it's related. So oh, hypermock. Maybe I want hypermock because it doesn't have tests right now. And maybe I want integration tests that uh, just try to use that. So, I mean, these, these tests, they have been taken, they have been taken from um, hyper. So maybe I can just get some, some basic hyper test from there. Yeah, I probably could do that. Uh, so the good thing is that all tests that we ever used are here. Mock connector in order, mock connector in order. And let's just, let's just try one of these and have a have a unit test. Because this should just give me a mock connector at least, and then how do I use it? Mock Google refresh, yeah, whatever. So if I'm in hypermock, I should be able to use th that thing. I will have an integration test just to be sure. And <clears throat> 
be able to do it like, oh no, wait, make dear tests. And then we go with, yep. Uh, well, macros.rs. Good. So there's no need to, to gate it here because test, these things are only compiled in test mode anyway. So we want to define an extern crate. Yep, hypermock. And of course, macro use, right? This is what seems to fail here. Then we can have a test case that say, says, well, actually we don't need a test case. We just want to want to run this. Well, we could, we could actually, oh, damn it. Now I lost clipboard. No. <clears throat> paste from history here that's the one let's just have this here because that would already not work right but maybe it does one new file okay cargo test should now actually try to compile this macro undefined debug uh Okay, that's the log, external create log macro use. So interesting now, oh yeah, now I have to pick that up as well. That's annoying. Maybe that's part of the problem, no. So it seems to already try to use these macros. No question asked here. So if I now do this, the debug macro should be defined and you know, we should get somewhere. Now we need hyper as well. And the integration test should eventually do something useful. Method connect has an incompatible type for trade. Value differs in mutability. Oh. So does it mean... <sighs> oh no, wait. Cargo update. Maybe I'm using some outdated hyper here. Yeah, I don't know yet. Maybe soon I will. Well, eventually. I also wanted to test uh, the new multi-threaded compiling that is implemented, which should be useful for debugging because their optimizations don't really matter, but code generation does. And uh, that should be sped up tremendously, hopefully. The idea is that Rust-C is splitting up the code into, into multiple units. And there will be one code unit per core that you want to have. And that way you can parallelize the optimizations or the, yeah, the, I don't know, hopefully the code can as well. But maybe I'm getting this wrong and it's just for release mode. Uh, anyway, so method connect has an, it's still wrong. Which cert are we getting here? Are we getting the wrong cert? Is this up to date? Oh, no, there is no cert here. Damn it. Just hyper. So are we getting the latest hyper? Do I have a hyper override? Oops. So we are on stable here. Are we? We are. Okay. So don't have an hyper over override here. I don't even know what the latest hyper version on crates is. Um, Am I latest? Good pull FF only origin, maybe origin master. I don't know if I have tracking branches set up. Okay. Which version are we looking at? 052. Yeah. I'm totally not, not sure which version I'm getting here. Okay, greater greater than 05 at least. So I probably have the latest here. I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't know why not. And this is stuff 
that I just added because I've, I've seen it online because for some reason the, the my macros couldn't be found even though that was never necessary to def to make it a plug-in here. And I think it is still not necessary. So if I remove this and try to build or to test this again, it should still fail with the same error. All right, method connectors, incompatible type for trade values, different mutability. Uh, so I thought this was fixed already. <laughs> or did it change again? Because I remember seeing a PR that dealt with that. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Something changed there. Okay. So let's try to, to fix it. Connect. So probably it's now a mat right interesting i can build it like that but i can't test it what the heck is going on As if this guy would get different versions of hyper, which can't be. <clears throat> Let's do it just once, just to see all the versions that are pulled in. Hyper 052, I would expect here. I don't see, hypermark is something I don't understand anymore. Maybe it's something that changed here. Maybe I should look it up. GitHub hyper. Uh, it's always a bit shitty that you usually don't know which kind of version you're looking at unless the author adds this information himself. You don't know. And that's, I think, something that could be improved in Rust C in general. So. Where would that be? I think it, mm, no. This is what? Network connector. Let's just search for it. There we go, okay. This all seems to be as expected. Oh, there's a mud self here. Okay, we have that. I totally have that. <laughs> oh, if there is a prefix, does it mean does it mean it's ignored? That would be awesome. I didn't know that, but apparently this works like that. Then you don't have to use it. Oh, cool. Nice. I don't know why I just why I see this just now. Man. All right. So this compile should be done now. And yeah, it is. Hyper 052, latest hyper as expected. So what's his problem? Why is that? So does the macro do mess something up? Because this stuff works, but if I try to use the macro, it doesn't work. Ah, this is why. Same here, huh? Because the macro used incorrect values or incorrect mutability, but only the macro. Man, so now it should work. Ah. So the, yeah, basically I just messed this up completely. <laughs> Good, I don't know why that was so hard for me, but yeah, maybe it's because 
I kind of hacked this together without ever really caring for it. <clears throat> so now, yeah, now it should work. So I guess I want to have one invocations of, of the mock connector as well somewhere. Uh, I think it has the very same name ident than URL expression thing. No, it's not the same. So I think the... Oops, cannot assign a mutable field. True, we are not mutable anymore. Ha, huh. funny. <laughs> so we have to make this a cell, right? First time usage, I think cell works with copy types. But hey, we're getting somewhere, that's nice. So, Let me do a cell new and then get and set. Okay, set we can use. Good. Do I have to import that? STD cell? Probably, huh? Yeah, we'll find out. I will obviously do it right here because here we need it. Use std cell cell. Actually, we need it right here. Right? And I hope there is some scope around it automatically so that I don't have to add that because otherwise this could possibly make things fail under circumstances. Yeah, I don't know, you'll see. Obviously we will, uh, we will have to test, oh, sure. We'll have to test the other macro as well, which probably fails ungracefully too. And here, wait, no wait. I think I'm messing it up already here you want to have cell set where do I instantiate that thing because here I should be just should just be setting it which just needs a, a borrow, a shared borrow. All right, uh, and <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know where, where this is instantiated. Don't I? Ah, it's setting up default. So this is automatically instantiated with a null in there, I think should be otherwise I will see good and now we say set a self current get plus one so that is that is that and look I want to set the streamers up as well so they need to be cells to uh ew. but this is copy all the time but that will work because we move stuff out of there right what does a get do i think a, a get returns a copy oh no so no that won't work 
No. Yeah, I think a ref cell would be what we want here. Because we want to borrow mud that stuff then. Okay, so let's see how far we get with that. No, too late. Oh, not too late, good. Since multi-rest is there, even invoking uh, cargo takes like a second or so. For some reason, it's super slow. Okay. The trait index is not implemented for... Oh, yeah. I try to use current here. <laughs> current get. Where else do I try to use it? I think that's the most complex one here. That should be much easier to adapt. Uh, yeah, it also has no state, so fine. Interesting. So now it's just the streamers left that we cannot modify. streamers okay so let's make this a a ref cell come on you can do this cell ref cell now we have it here default should be implementable for that type because the contain type implements default and uh, now we can say borrow unwrap huh? because that also can fail oh we get a ref i thought this thing can panic ah it automatically panics okay good 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 fine with me yeah cool no unwrap necessary so borrow lang, that should just pass it on to the contained value. And then we create a new vector, push that stuff on there, and then we actually want to push everything on that vector onto the streamers and use it uh, in that moment. Um, so I think this can be achieved by borrow mud extend and then it wants an iterator and this could be the into iterator so that consumes the value v basically and that should be that then we access streamers as well or again here and there so two times we have to adjust it Oh, it's a vector of strings even. I didn't realize that. I thought it was a vector of... Shoo, lucky me. I thought it was a vector of something more complicated like actual streams. Fortunately, it's not. Good. So... But I don't even think about it. Probably this is overcomplicated, but I don't care. I just want to make it work. <coughs> Streamers, borrow... And then we get we address the index of it, clone the string, in increment the cursor for it, and then we have a reader. I think read might even be implemented for a string, is it? By now, at least. String is quite versatile. For, oh no, wait, it's not. Oh. But this could be an FMT right, huh? So it's not <laughs> an I.O. right. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense because FMT uses um, UTF-8 strings or strings in general. But for VEC-UH, for instance, you have uh, read 
or write implemented natively the IO read, IO write. Good. Anyway, this is fine. Do, using the cursor here is totally all right. We might want to, I don't know, make this a bit prettier. Clone into bytes. Maybe put this here. Maybe. I don't know if that's better, but. So let's see how that works now. So there's a syntax error. Cell ref cell, no likey because silly me <coughs> used totally wrong um, characters there. Unable to infer enough type information. Really? Probably the into. Yeah, so is there a vector drain? I want a draining iterator, that's all. Because this guy here, vec new, let me push strings onto that, obviously. So it knows this is a string vector. And uh, yeah, so show me, show me what into does, maybe it does something. Oh, it doesn't have it here. Oh no, it should have it. Into iterator, into either. Ah. So let's see about that. Maybe that is what I wanted. That should be the draining. Oh, that should be the draining iterator, see? It ran the zero tests, but it executed the code nonetheless. <laughs> That's terrific. Cool. So that works now. Awesome. I think it would still not work for Yup Yup OAuth because the, the macro doesn't even get there for some reason. <laughs> it's not defined. I mean, if it would not be working, uh, you know, fine, but it's just not defined. Hyper RS. Oh, good. I have a project for this. Good. Um, because I want to have a mock connector test case here. And this one, for instance, which should, I just needed the, the syntax here because I couldn't recall that uh, hypermock. So now the second test, right? This should work as well. Probably it, well, it could have a chance to work because we have no information here. Oh, look at that. Expected identifier found keyword self. So I messed this up. Really? Why does it work down here, but not down here? Are you kidding me? Ah. Oops. Seems I put it into the wrong spot. Here it should be. What do you say? Cool. And yeah, now I could basically just use this test here even and use it as mine. Yeah, that could work. But it doesn't really make, you know, important is that the code compiles. Right. On the other hand, I should probably also verify that it does what it is supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. So let's try that. And, you know, interestingly, when I when I wrote this, I said, yeah, test cases are not needed. And let's just skip this uh, because it kind of works. Right. And it should be just a quick and dirty thing. And it was a quick and dirty thing. But at the end, you have to invest the time to do it. And you probably take more time because you're not in the code anymore. The later you wait with that. And uh, yeah, it's always like that. If you, if you, if you start getting messy, you're, you, take, you take on technical debt that you have to pay back later, just like that. So yeah, this is hyper. I don't know where that is coming from. That's the most annoying thing. Now I have to reproduce this somehow. So 
super, so it's hyper client, client and redirect policy. <clears throat> I think that's the prefix that I want to use. Yeah, and that should be all, huh? Voila. That could possibly be my first test here. Oh. Where's server? Oh, here it is. I don't know where that is coming from. Hyper server server? No. So, let's look at hyper one more time. Header, hyper header server. Really? Okay, if you say so. I don't really believe that, but oh, that does something. Cool. <clears throat> so we have successfully run one test. like that because that's really why we have this the test below this test was copied from hyper <clears throat> credit where credit is due good and now the only thing that's left is to try to test this Google refresh thing, which returns the, the stuff you see here in order. Um, so each time you connect, you get the new res the, the next result. <clears throat> Probably it would be enough to just to just use um, do this and then have a comma here. I don't know if a, if a comma is needed. Mock connector in order. No, just needs expressions one after another, so comma is not needed. Two. So in theory, each time I connect to that thing, so I get a client, and each time I, I get from there, I get different input. So it's either one or two if I read from that, right? So up to here, I should try something. And res, what's res? Ah, res is the result request something. Mock Google. Yeah, let's call it mock. Um, sequential. Ah, redirect policy doesn't matter. So I should be able to get one and two out of there. So that's my rest. Do I get my rest at least? Let's see how far we get. Uh, oh, true. I think here I want to do default, right? Like that. Cool. And now I should be able to say assert equal res read. Okay, for that I will need to import use std io read. So now I should be able to read to string. <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy with bytes too. Let's just read 
one byte or something. Let's see what, what we have here. Something com comfortable. Yeah, I could you just use bytes next. Maybe an iterator would be cool. Yeah, let's let's use bytes next. Bytes next unwrap is a binary byte of one. So what do you say? A why does it not like my parenthesis there? Because of this. Okay. So that should be true. No. This function takes... Oh yeah, true. I shouldn't actually read there. I should just ask for bytes. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, so that actually returns none or a result. So I have to unwrap two times there. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. Now I, I just I just do this another time. It's interesting that this is kind of mutable here, right? Because we, we change it. Huh. So the second time we ask, I get this. Fine, cool. So now we know this actually works. We also fixed it. So that is worth a 1.1. We are on master here. Let's do it one after another. tests. Wait a moment, let's do one after another. Huh? So what do we do first? First we add tests. <laughs> yeah, right. First we add tests. Test macros. Added integration tests. This shows that <laughs> the macros are not actually working anymore due to signature changes. Am I working on a ticket by the way? I think I think not here. No, I'm I'm on Yap OAuth and I don't think that GitHub, GitHub, yep, Hypermark has anything here. No, totally clean. It claims. Good, so that's the first one. The second one, fix macros. Uh, adjust to changed hyper signatures. As connect now takes a self only we had to use cells to mutate our state in the case of the sequential more connector it's a bit messy and ain't pretty, but it now works at least, thanks to the tests. It should stay that way as well. Nice. So that is that, is that. that's the fix. And now we go ahead with <coughs> the updated version and do I have a uh, readme I have? Do I have a change log here? I do. So now I can use clock. I think it's clock, right? Yeah. 
I think I should also update it before I do anything. It might, might have improved. Clog cargo bill. First, pull it. See. Now I can check the change log here. The flavor of the link to generate. Interesting. Let's use this to empty components and commit subjects. Distinguishes minor and patch version headers. Okay, I don't know what that means. That could be interesting. GitHub and stash to specify the style of link to generate for commits. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like. Maybe it's documented here. From latest tag, patch version. <laughs> yeah, I think. There's nothing nothing super new here. Cargo update, cargo build, release. Then I just push this. Ah, latest clap at least. I'll just push this into my latest. Or overwrite the file that I have there already. If it ever finishes compiling, that is. Huh. <laughs> there we go. Yay. It's doing it. Probably I wouldn't have to do a release build after all. Okay, we are done. Good. That was actually not too slow. Target, release, clog, user, local, bin. There we go. Nice. So now I can use this awesome clog and say um, from latest tag. I think that might even be set already. See, from latest tag is true. So all I have to do is clog set version 1.0.1. Uh, yeah, that's how I named them. Good. Voila. And that's that's the thing. That's all. Nice. So yeah, I think what I I can just commit it. Chore version up. Point a uh, one point point oh. That is all I wanna say about this. And uh, now the typical thing, cargo publish and, oh yeah, let's check the tag format, good. Cargo publish and git tag v uh, 1.0.1 and git push tags origin master. And we are done with that. Let's do it. So we rebuild everything. And also, finally, we have a working hypermock again. That's a good thing. Took us a while to do it. But I had, yeah, I, th I think not having tests was my downfall here because that project wasn't working all the time and, yeah, was troublesome. However, I still don't think that Yap OAuth will work because there seems to be a different problem now. Uh, at least we could verify that if you have just a plain file, macro use will work. There's no need to do anything special here with plugins and whatnot and custom definitions. Doesn't matter. And this is really what, what's interesting here. So it works, right? This is the proof. It does work now. And now we can look at, okay, that also worked, nice. And we can look at Yap OAuth again 
and update this one so that we get the latest hypermock and can try to cargo test, which should trigger a rebuild of your hypermock. Yeah, good. Oh, we are in hypermock. Let's close this. Um, now we are in your OAuth and can try the same thing. And still, <laughs> it's not defined. So what's going on here? I don't get it. I totally don't get it. It must be related to the way this works. So what if we are on nightly? Multi-rest, show override, we're on stable. Um, what happens here? Build should still work, right? And now we, we use the standard version, kind of the, the Rust plugin, the Rust compiler plugin version. So cert will generate, generate the, the um, implementation directly in the abstract syntax tree. Hmm. Yeah, usually this failed because uh, syntax and whatnot didn't really work in Nightly. But now, this doesn't seem to be the case. It's awesome. I'm not even sure if I need sure if I need these overrides or if the latest stuff might already be on on crates. Could be. Could not be. I don't know. Yeah, 50 minutes in. So probably I should say, well, we, we fixed, yup, hypermark, that's already something, and call it a day. And I think that's exactly what I will do. So I will keep going on this one. Thanks for watching and have a good day.